Welcome, everybody. Yet one more episode of Mids Watch. I think we're up to 16 now. It's going to be good. So the the fully scheduled run of this is going to be about, I think it's 184 or 104 episodes. I can't remember which, but. You're going to like it anyway. This one, it's much shorter than the other one because there's not much to it. It's just going to hit on three kind of uh, concepts for you to understand within a red pill marriage or relationship. It's in the differences between being assertive and second guessing the other person. It's referring to leadership and specifically weak leadership and what that means, as well as a, a tip of the hat to frame control. Luckily, too, I guess it's because this one wasn't too serious. The guy left his post up. It's always seems to be the guys that have the best field reports that we can learn the most from who don't delete their stuff because and I'll say this too for you guys a lot of you guys are in my uh, patreon right now we're putting field reports out you know very private intimate somewhat embarrassing details of life and we've all we've all been there and I would strongly suggest that you don't delete your stuff when you do it maybe you're on the subreddit maybe you're on your other community maybe you're in the discord who knows I say this for a very specific reason it's not just because I want more content to use for Thursdays at midnight <laughs> It's because you can look back at these things and have a good laugh. In fact, if you haven't looked back at field reports of yours from a year ago, shaking your head on about what an idiot that guy was, then you haven't made any growth. And it's a good way to know that because so many guys have been red pill and then, you know, two years I've been doing this stuff and my life's still a mess or it was good for a bit, then it turned into a mess. And I'm just like, all right, well, let's see some of his old field reports. It was just amazing. Even content creators have this issue. Like I remember... Uh, what was his name? It was like Arctic Wolf or D-Man the Wolf, something like that. Anyways, a religious guy, decent enough guy. I guess he was just pulling like a Michael story. That's the red pilled story of a good conservative Christian guy who got to college and all the girls were sleeping and having fun and he wasn't doing any of that. And they said, and he's like, you guys are never going to get a husband by 30 if you're acting like this. And they laughed at him because I will. Don't worry about it. And they did. And so he had to accept that there's going to be no comeuppance. Your values just aren't useful. It's not that, you know, you're saving yourself from pain the next year. It's like, no, you're saving yourself from adding more pain right now. Uh, yeah, anyway, so he was talking about uh, something bad about Red Pill. Red Pill cult this. You know, the standard stuff you hear from religious guys. It's not a good way to live your life. It's not this. It's not Jesus. And you're like, all right, fine, whatever. But then I'm like, wait a minute, that name sounds familiar. And I remember, I'm like, I'll go back to his old posts. I'm like, I remember this guy. And I'm like, hey, man, is this you? And he goes, yeah. And it was a post of his from six years prior to this. So this is six years ago, by the way. So this has been 12 years ago now. And you read his stuff from six years ago. It was him having like a crisis of conscience for his faith. And he realized like all this stuff made sense. The pickup guys, the game guys, the red pill guys. He's like, okay, I want a trad wife and a white picket fence. So what I got to do is I've got to learn game. It doesn't mean I have to spin plates and sleep with every girl in the neighborhood, but I have to be in a position where at least I could, because otherwise no girl's going to give me the time of the day. And I was like, wow, this is a great revelation. So like, ask him, I asked him privately. I'm like, dude, so how is it going? Six years. You decided you made a good decision. Gonna pursue my own self-interest and not be like so timid and expect people to accommodate my value system and is to meet people at the incentive place. Be a hot dude, girls will come after me and then, you know, share my values. And he's like, yeah, I didn't really do much with it. It just kind of whatever. And he just doubled down on his own lackluster life and he wasted six years of his life. Now it's probably 12. If I see him on there, it's something, a combination of the letter D and the word wolf. Northern wolf. That's the one. Northern wolf. So if you ever see him on here, I think he might even write for Terror House magazine. Just keep that in mind. Ask him how he's been. If his last six years he found himself a trad wife or not. But this one's not going to the religious thing. We did that the last time. This one is the wife thinks I'm treating her like a baby. He's like, lads, how to respond. The wife said that when I speak to her lately, it feels like I'm treating her like a baby. Now I get the whole, you've been doing it heaps. But when I ask for an example so I can become aware of what I'm doing, she can only come up with one. Example, we have dinner plans with another couple tonight. And this afternoon, my wife says, do you mind watching our boy while I cook some food for the family barbecue tomorrow? Which is great because she's finally started cooking more. Now I say, I don't mind as long as you think you'll have done it all before we leave tonight. Now wife, she's known for being late. 
And she says, what does that mean? And so I'm like, look, we have plans tonight, and it might be a stretch for you to get this all done in that amount of time. However, if you think you can do it, I'm fine with watching our boy. Cue the moppy pissed off look, or mopey pissed off look. So I ask if she has an issue. And you get to speak to me like some kind of a child nonsense. Maybe it's just her defenses coming up because I told her that we probably won't be done in time. And I'm sure it's just her not wanting to be me for me to be more assertive. Who knows? What do I do with this? Cheers, guys. Which, and I got to give this guy credit. So his initial post was like six years ago. But he stuck with it. Three years I saw him in here. And I think the very end of it, he started like giving advice to other people. So he was at the point where he was kind of internalizing all this stuff to the point that, and the thing, so the thing you'll notice about guys, once they've taken the pill, they've worked on their marriages, they get to a point where they start getting an interest in offering advice to other people. Don't mistake that as in like proselytizing. It's not. What it is, is when a guy is trying to give advice, he's trying to cement those ideas in his head of what he's learned. If I can teach, it's like a memory thing. They find out by writing something down, you can remember maybe 30% of what uh, what what you what, or what was said if you were hearing it. If you read something, like 15%. If you write it down, like 40%. If you teach something, 90%. So it's absolutely funny. And at the end of this, I'm probably going to fill out the time, talk about his very, very last post, which was two years after this one. Which, by the way, I will say this, they were all in the Ask Married Red Pill. And it's something I've noticed. So Ask, there's two subreddits, the Married Red Pill and Ask Married Red Pill. And they're there for purposes. Married Red Pill has is for field reports. Own your shit weekly. And then if you've had enough experience that you can provide something of value to the reader, you put it in there. Bam. What happened is there was a lot of people asking questions and just sucking up value from everything and shitting up the place. Subreddits never work well that way. So we made a second one, which is like, that's the that's the space for tarts. That's where you go if you don't know what you're doing, because we don't want you to shit up this other place, which is supposed to be one of value. And so when a guy's there, you have to realize like you're there because you're useless. And not only are you useless, the only use we can think of is guys who are working on themselves can articulate what they've learned by using you as a springboard, that advice thing I talked about. So it's literally taking somebody of no use and providing value for the community. And for guys who spend too much time there, they don't understand that and they tend not to make it, but we'll get back to this one. And again, it's another one, Jack at the Jack at the helm, where he takes issue with the guy just saying, she just doesn't want me to be assertive. She just wants me to fail. It's like, did you really think you were being assertive, bro? Like these responses are being assertive. Go for it. Well, that's going to take you at least an hour. There's just not enough time. Well, that's a good idea since we don't have time to prep food tomorrow, but that might make us late tonight. Let me see if I can push back dinner plans for 20 minutes. Like you just lamely second guessed her. And even worse, you did it in a pretty silly manner instead of just a straightforward. How long is this going to take you? You said, I don't mind as long as you think you'll have it all done before we have leave tonight. I'm going to pause here because I want to I need to articulate this because a lot of guys really don't understand the concepts of assertiveness and leadership, and it comes across in this passive aggressive, um, second guessing sort of way. We're all guilty of it. Nobody's perfect at not doing this. I've done it myself, but just be aware of it. So when you do do it, you catch yourself and you fix it. Why is it important to fix it? Well, because if you're just second guessing the other person, if you're just sniping on them and pinging off anybody, you're building a cycle of resentment. And if there's one thing I can tell you, it's that as far as strong emotions go, resentment is not the sexy one. Anger works way better. Sadness works. Anxiety works. Happiness works. Indignation, not so much. Keep that in mind. And so yeah, this is a lot of the times where it's just um, girl will ask for leadership because she's starting to see you in a leadership role and yeah, whatever you want to do, that's fine. That's like the old classic dinner one, right? Where do you want to eat? I don't know, wherever you want to eat. It's not leadership. And same as here. Well, if you can handle it, I guess so. Same thing. It's not leadership. It's just second guessing the other person and it demoralizes them. In this case, he was talking about how the wife doesn't cook much and she wants to cook more. And now should you be encouraging that? And again, another red pilled mental model. Encourage good behavior and don't reward bad behavior. So in this case, wife's cooking more. He wanted her to cook more. So what does he do to reward it? 
second guess her ability to get it all done in time. If you want to lead, if you want to be assertive, just lead. Just be assertive. If you don't think she can do it in time, say no, don't worry about it. Or say, you know, scale it back to something we can fit in the timeline. Or say, I'm going to buy you some breathing room so you got the time you need. But don't just put it on her because you're adding... You're adding not only that, but that stress of possible rejection. And women hate rejection. Guys hate rejection, but women hate it. Like three A's. Because with rejection is that same fear that you get ousted from your tribe. It's a limbic brain thing. In the same way that every guy is kind of afraid of an ass kicking, which is why he acts on best behavior around somebody who looks like he wants to kick his ass. A girl, when she's in a situation where there can be social ramifications, will always opt out of taking responsibility. And it's just one of those things. And even Jack agrees. He's like, come on, dude. That's weak leadership on your part. And such an infantilizing response. Especially since her objective is something positive. Like you mentioned, you like seeing her cooking more as a good thing. So she wants to prep food for the barbecue. And you want her to do that. You want her to be on time for your dinner plan. So just fucking figure out the logistics and make it fucking work, dude. Like, if you think she's underestimating how long this will take her, there's countless ways you can handle it without sounding like a whiny, second-guessing, weak-sauce captain. That bored bitch wanted another go at you, huh? That night, I made sure she kept the hat on. And then he kind of brings up the other part here with, like, I asked the wife for an example, and she can only ever come up with this one. And he's like, well, I can come up with two in an earlier post of yours where you said to her, OK, I believe you, but I also know that you had a tough time last week with the new role. So I hope this isn't a way to not go to work. If you're struggling with this role or want to go back to your shift, we need to sit down and discuss it. Like, this is what I mean, man. He was talking this like he wanted to get the wife back in the work slays and she was bitching about work. And he's like, well, if you can't handle it, then maybe we need to have another talk. He's like, knock that shit off, dude. Either your wife knows what the fuck she's doing with these logistical decisions, or she doesn't. I get that sometimes you're not sure, and you get anxious and your own hamster wants to make sure she doesn't fuck something up. Well, just shut the fuck up, gather more information, and only say something when you're ready with concrete or an objective logistical directives. This other example is like, well, the wife is very much used to being captain and having me follow like a lapdog. She knows I have opinions, and when I question things, arguments all around. Realize... This probably means that your leadership muscles have atrophied regarding logistical issues. Also realize that if your wife is used to being captain, she's probably already developed a decent sense of executive function and impulse control, which you should definitely be encouraging these strengths if she's to be your first officer, instead of second guessing them. If you guys don't know what we're talking about here, the captain and first officer model is, I believe it's Athel K talked about it from Married Man Sex Life Primer. It's a, it's a way to, to conceptualize your relationship where you are the captain of your you know, relationship ship and everything that happens within it is your responsibility, but it's not necessarily your job. The first officer is your trusted advisor. Again, trusted advisor. So she gets a say, but you ultimately make the decision. And it's a model that's worked very well. It's not the only model, but it's probably the most well-known and best working model out there, especially for guys who have issues with assertiveness. Anyways, he goes, this is why your wife keeps getting pissed off. You're trying to lead and just coming across as something between annoying second guessing workplace boss and overly doting parent because her leadership always seemed like a marginalizing and emasculating power play to you. But if you start acting as captain and start marginalizing her, all you're doing is modeling your own shitty leadership methods after her. And that's just a zero sum exchange where she'll probably be just as annoyed as you used to be. And that's why the optical dynamic here is where you're the captain because you can utilize her as a first officer in a way she never could if she were captain. So what the hell am I talking about here? Again, it's a frame control thing. So there's going to be times where you don't know what to do. We're just going to go hog with this example here. Wife wants to cook for the barbecue. You don't know if she's going to have enough time to do it or she's going to be late. You've got two concerns. I want the wife to enjoy cooking for the family more. Good thing. I want the wife to be on time more. Good thing. How do you put those two together? Well, he has to know, will she be able to finish the stuff and the time she goes there? And he doesn't know. And to be fair, for a lot of these decisions, none of us are going to know. So what do you do? Well, sometimes you can just let things fail.
do the cook thing. Find out how long it takes. Maybe it makes you guys wait for the barbecue. All right, well, now you know, right? You tested it, and now you know when she wants to prep stuff, she's going to need X amount of time, and it's not going to work. You sacrificed an on-time for the barbecue for that. That's leadership. It happens. If she gets mad at something, nobody's going to like us because we're late to the thing. You're like, I got it. And that's your leadership part is to own that. Hey, just so you know, Cindy, we're going to be late for the barbecue by misjudge some timings things. All right, good enough. Which you did. You told your wife, go ahead, do your thing. So when she didn't do it on time, it's not her fault. It's your fault for giving her permission. Do you know what I mean? At the same time, it could be just like, I know it's not going to take time or I don't want to take the chance that it would. To me, it's more important for us to be on time than to have this prep cooking out of the way. Your guys, no, sit down, relax, take your note. But, and this is the thing you have to avoid. If you've made the decision, right or wrong, yeah, babe, do it. Good example of this, we go hardware shopping. My girl loves to renovate things. And she'll say, what do you think I should do here? And I'll say, I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to do, because it's like, I'm not the renovating guy. You're the pro at this. I trust your judgment. She comes home with something. What I used to do, blue pill wise, is then start second guessing. It's like, oh, why did you go with that? Why did you go with this? And then that's not a leadership thing. Like from red pill perspective, it's like, no, you said I trust your judgment. So now when she comes back, if it's not to your standard, well, you trusted her judgment. Con consistency. You got to own that. And then think next time this comes up have more direct input but you can't have it both ways you see what i mean now, it doesn't necessarily mean every choice you make is perfect but every choice you make is yours i was talking last episode about taking things and removing agency from you and equal relationships kind of have an aspect of this where you remove agency from the man well we're even we we, we do everything equally she has just as much say as i do and then when things go wrong well look what she did can you believe that she wanted to prep cook we got late it's like, no, man, the relationship isn't equal. You're the captain. You're in charge. Why were you guys late for the dinner? Because I told her she could prep cook. I misjudged the time. She didn't get it done in time. None of this. Well, do you think you can handle it? Just something simple. Do you have enough time? Yeah. All right, good. Do you trust her? Great. Go for it, hon. Trust your decision. She has enough time. You don't think she does? It's like, let's not take that chance. I tell you what. Insert logistical solution here and we'll deal with it later. But that's the point. And this isn't alpha stuff either. This isn't a way to get a girl wet for you. This is strictly the logistics of running a relationship. And again, everybody talks about red pill is about being the alpha is alpha that ever alpha, but that's not the case. It's a case of how to run a successful relationship with happiness for everybody. Again, Captain, you made a choice. This girl's to be in your life in a monogamous relationship. That's your choice. You fucking own it. And in this case, that involves being able to make these decisions and have things go. And I know it sounds stupid. It's a barbecue. Who cares, right? But here, if you can't handle it on these very small situations of prep cooking for a barbecue and going to a friend's house. Then you're not going to be able to handle it on bigger conversations like, do we want to have a baby? Do we want to move to Seattle? Do we want to move closer to my parents? Like all these big decisions. Again, when you have the little situations on lock with a good process in place, the big situations tend to sort themselves out and they tend not to be big situations. And that's kind of where you want to go with this. But again, a lot of guys are like, I want the respect of my wife. It's like, well, just fucking earn it then because little shit like this, the passive aggressive, the second guessing, the poor leadership, the weak frame control, all this stuff eventually builds up. And I don't care if you're the alpha as Chad that ever alpha, it's six foot four, six pack abs, six figure salary. If you're just, you're just gonna be the same millionaire entrepreneur that's sitting there with his wife taking half of his money. And every time he comes home, he's still a little goofy codependent schlub. It's like, dude, sometimes owning your shit involves more than just being Chad Thundercock. It involves being the captain of a fucking ship. And sometimes keeping the ship running is as simple as just making sure it's cleaned thoroughly and frequently and logistically has all the basics in place, you know? <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for sticking to this one. Oh, before we stop, though, actually, I'll get to the one thing. So this was him two years later. So I want you to get an idea of what a guy sounds like at the beginning of his map and closer to the two year mark. And he's talking about he has 13 years in one job, hated it very much, underachieving, five months into a new job, significant pay raise, long hours, city based, lots of networking and new people. And wife knows my boss is extremely attractive. I'm gonna take a quick pause. Like, 
I love this. I have not seen anybody yet who came into the married red pill within a year wasn't earning more money. And it was, it's one of those weird revelations that people are here like, I'm here because sexually I'm dissatisfied. And then they take the pill, they do their stuff, they add more alpha, they add more beta, they get better logistics. And they're like, hey, I've been treated like shit at my job too. Everybody makes money and not just like a 5% pay raise. Like, hey, I'm earning like 30% more than I was last year. I don't know, little stuff like that always makes me laugh. And he's here like blue pill years of making my wife happy. The last three days spent in our office for sites and conferences and stuff. Um, he's getting messages from the wife like I'm happy for you and this new opportunity. But you should be thinking of me and the fact that I have to go to work all day, then come home and be a mom by myself while you're away. Leads in the morning before wife's going to have brunch with a girlfriend conversation about financial stuff. He wasn't listening enough. And he smiled at something and didn't respond. She starts getting ready and then I need to talk. Lots of tears. And what type of husband just smiles and doesn't respond to this wife? Basically, she's just feeling neglected, right? You know the ones. And so he knows this was a comfort test, but he didn't know how to react to it. He just tried. He just gave her a hug. Says, you're very important to me. And left it at that. Wife pushes him aside, continues to get ready to go out. And he doesn't know what she wants me to say. And that's kind of the end of it. Like, he just doesn't know how to deal with a simple comfort test. Which is kind of funny, because a lot of guys... Again, there's always these small, simple things guys have trouble with. Like, in this case, this one's another common one, too. There's actually an example now where the guy had a great job, great wife. She was getting a little stressed out over the kids. So she's like, let's move to be closer to my parents so they can help me. And then I could be cooking more dinner for you and, you know, sleeping with you better. Become... It's basically a chore play thing, but they were suggesting the move. So the guy did it to make her happy had a two and a half hour commute each way for his new job. And then three months in, it didn't pan out the way the wife wanted and she blamed him for not being at home enough with him and the kids. So like she, all this is, is a declaration that she's not happy and she's throwing shit against the wall to see what sticks. Now the fact that she was doing it after brunch with her friends probably meant the same thing, but I find it funny. Um, like two years in, He's been dealing with the alpha side of things. Didn't even think about the comfort side of things. And this is such a nothing story. Like it's good and it's bad. It's a nothing story. In other words, nothing really happened. It's a simple comfort test. He didn't know what to do. All she wanted to do was feel appreciated. But he handled everything else. So just remember when you're talking about this stuff, just be aware. This is, again, a two year gap that you never stop learning. You may be able to fix the most horrible situations in your life, but Every now and then, it's nice to know how just to give a perfect comfort test and not care. Like, the fact that he cared enough about this to write a field report is probably the biggest problem. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'll end on this. So Real Zero Dad actually commented on it. He was the first guy. He's like... And the guy's like, unfortunately, I didn't know what she wanted me to say or do. And he's like, yep, you fell right into her frame. You had an opportunity to comfort her and change the subject or fog or leave the room but you had to make sure her feelings were addressed before she left the house. Now she can leave secure in the knowledge that she has nothing to fear or desire at home. She's the prize again. And I was like, that's absolutely wonderful. Rule Zero Dad is the greatest. He puts this stuff, follow on Twitter if you haven't, by the way, he puts this stuff so succinctly. And the guy's like, well, what, did, what should I have done then? He goes, go about your life. Dwelling on failure only breeds anxiety. You seem to have learned from it. Now read up on how to deal with comfort tests because the new job has created some opportunities for dread and challenges that neither of you are familiar with. Yeah, he's got a hot boss. He's away from the house. The girl's feeling dread. The guy's got his shit together. And she loves to complain. That's her frame. His frame, I'm top tier. Don't worry about it. We got this. And that's all it has to be. So enjoy this one. It's a nice little, a nice little, uh, you know, crystal ball. You can see what kind of stuff's in your future and how the problems never fully go away, but they do get much funnier to deal with. But I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Cheers.